Dr. Ang Feng Tem to answer truths or facts and myths about cancer. Yes. Is cancer infectious? Can you get it by being close to someone? Is cancer hereditary? Can you get it from your parents? Let's talk about cancer and biopsy. A lot of Filipinos are <laughs> afraid to touch the tumor because it will help spread the cancer. True or false? So another controversial issue about sugary drinks. Sugary foods, can cancer patients take them or not? Good day everyone. I have a very special guest again today, Dr. Ang Peng Tiang, very famous Singapore cancer specialist also in Southeast Asia. Dr. Ang Peng Tiang is my personal doctor. So we are lucky to have him to answer truths or facts and myths about cancer. Sir, let's start. Yes. Is cancer infectious? Can you get it by being close to someone? No. Cancer is not infectious. Many people are so afraid of interacting with cancer patients for fear that it can be transmitted. In actual fact, it is not possible. Cancer cannot be transmitted either through close contact, whether through kissing, whether through blood, whether through a saliva, sexual intercourse, urine. The cancer cells cannot be transmitted from one cancer patient to another patient. It is not possible. Okay. Is cancer hereditary? Can you get it from your parents? Yes. Well, it is well known that if you have a strong family history of cancer, then yes, you are at increased risk of developing cancer. However, it is not an absolute thing. For example, if you have a, 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 your mother had breast cancer and you are a female, yes, your risk of getting breast cancer is slightly increased. If you've got, let's say, two family members, your mother and your sister had breast cancer, your risk of getting breast cancer is increased even further. So yes, to a certain extent, it is uh, hereditary or there's this increased risk. There are some cancers that are very, very hereditary. For example, if you carry the BRCA gene, if your mother had the BRCA gene and you have the BRCA gene, then your risk of getting breast cancer is extremely high. It is for this reason that the famous actress Angelina Jolie, when she found that she had the BRCA gene, she actually went for bilateral mastectomies in order to prevent herself from getting breast cancer. But many other cancers are not hereditary. For example, lung cancer is not hereditary. Stomach cancer is not hereditary. Colon cancer, well, maybe it's a slight increased risk, but generally cancers are not hereditary. Was that a, a correct decision by Angelina Jolie? Okay, there's no such thing as a right or wrong decision. I think it's important when faced with such a situation that you have informed consent. You must understand what are the risks, what are the benefits if you were to undergo such a drastic prophylactic. Prophylactic means preventive mastectomy. Prophylactic ulfractomy means preventive removal of both ovaries. This is something that needs to be discussed very carefully between the doctor and the patient to understand the risk profile as well as the risk of any surgical procedure. Let's talk about cancer and biopsy. A lot of Filipinos are <laughs> afraid to touch the tumor because it will help spread the cancer. True or false? False. I don't know where this came about, but in actual fact, in order to reach a diagnosis, in order to be able to know how best to treat the cancer, it is very important to get a biopsy. From the specimen itself, we can understand so much about the tumour as to how it is best treated. For example, in the bad old days, any time a patient has got stage 4 lung cancer, you're talking about chemotherapy. Everybody who has stage 4 lung cancer must go for chemotherapy. But now, things have changed so much. By doing a biopsy of the specimen, we are able to study the molecular profiling of the cancer. Oh, with this, we know there are many patients with lung cancer that don't require chemotherapy. They can be treated with oral treatment. And with this oral treatment, the results are far, far superior than for those patients who require chemotherapy. Just hearing you, Dr. Ang, makes me relax. I think there's a certain percentage. The patients feel it when the doctor is very confident. Now, another controversial issue about sugary drinks. Sugary foods, can cancer patients take them or not? 
cancer patients are allowed to take sugar. There is no data again to show that the patient who takes more sugar is at a, has a poorer outcome compared to those who do not take sugar. So please go ahead and take all the sugar that you want. It does not make a difference. If indeed sugar is such an important component, then you would say that patients who are diabetic will have a far poorer outcome because they've got higher blood sugar levels. No, it is not true. It is true that yes, cancers do require sugar in their, in their metabolism, but it is not true that by taking sugar, you will encourage the cancer to grow. About cancer patients and their diet, what, what do you recommend they eat? I generally tell people have a balanced diet. I'm mean, ever you have always been told you must have a balanced diet. There must be carbohydrates. There must be protein. You must take enough vitamins. You must take your fruits and vegetables. It is no different for a cancer patient. In fact, for a cancer patient, a balanced diet, a good diet, eating heartily, is very important to keep strong during the process of cancer treatment. There's no secret mushroom or herbal. I tr I truly, truly wish there was. I truly wish there was. I mean, there is indeed a diet that can make a difference for my patients. I will tell all of them to do it. But the fact is that there isn't. We as doctors have one primary objective. We don't really care why patients get better. We only want them to get better. Whether it's through prayer, the power of prayer, whether it's through good nutrition, whether it's through positive thinking, whether it's through our treatment process, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that we work together to help cancer patients get better. That's the placebo effect. The well, effect. I believe so. I believe that's why it's very important to find a doctor you can trust. Because when you have a doctor you can trust, you can fight the battle in confidence. Being fearful, yes. being stressful, I think you know, any cancer will, patient will tell you, you know, once they are unsure what is going on, that is when they really feel the most hopeless. I read somewhere that those who are, have this uh, fighting ability, they want to fight the cancer, they live longer. Absolutely true. You see it now in our practice all the time. The patient who comes in completely defeated, if you cannot motivate them to fight, you cannot show them you know, to help them get that spirit, that fighting spirit, give them that sense of hope, these are the patients that die very quickly. How do they fight? Fighting is very difficult to explain. Fighting really is a desire, a hope to live. The desire to live longer, to live better. That's why it's not just the role of the patient himself or herself. It is also important that the doctor, the nursing staff, as well as the family members and friends to encourage and support the cancer patient in this battle. I'm sure you yourself will know what this is all about. <laughs> oh, there are good days, there are bad days. But whenever I think of Dr. Ang, I, I get into better days. You're very kind. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are there foods that cancer patients should avoid, like raw foods? Oh, there are some people who do believe in that. There are many people who believe that when you're undergoing chemotherapy, your white blood cell may be low. You try to avoid raw food because you know, raw food will have some degree of bacterial contamination mm -hmm. and your resistance may not be that good. But by and large, we keep a very close watch on patients' white blood cell by giving boosters, very few of our patients really encounter severe lowering of the white blood cell. But there are some patients that despite all that we do, that white blood cell can drop and these patients are indeed at increased risk of developing infection. So for safety purposes, you say you want to avoid raw food, I will say it is not wrong. Another common belief is that if a doctor diagnoses you as stage 4 cancer, that it is a death sentence. Okay. By and large, it is true that most stage 4 cancers cannot be cured. But to use the word death sentence is almost like, look, you're going to die very soon. And that's not true. Many of our stage 4 uh, cancer patients live for very extended periods of time. There are some cancers that are very, very treatable. For example, in breast cancer, we have got stage 4 cancers that go well beyond 10, 20 years. Lung cancer, we are now talking of 5, 10 years. While indeed we cannot cure stage 4 cancers, it doesn't mean that a stage 4 patient should not should not be treated and will die quickly, it is completely untrue. What is the secret to prolonging their life? There is really no secret. The secret really is understanding cancer. 
every patient's cancer is not the same. By understanding the cancer, we need to know what is the best possible treatment. Once we can find the right treatment, many patients have the possibility of living extended life. How about chemotherapy? A lot of people are afraid of chemotherapy. Everyone is afraid of chemotherapy because chemotherapy is a toxic drug. All right. However, when used properly, it will do more good than harm. Therefore, we tell patients, do not be fearful of chemotherapy. If it's needed to be given, we will give it. But when we can avoid it, we will certainly avoid it. Another common problem, Dr. Ang, is lung cancer. I see you have so many patients with lung cancer. How do you approach the treatment of lung cancer? Very good question. The first thing we do is to establish the diagnosis. Number one, we must make sure that indeed this patient has a lung cancer and not something else. Number two, we need to stage the cancer in order to know whether the cancer is localized or whether it has already spread. If it is localized and amenable for surgery, we will generally recommend for these patients to undergo surgery. However, the large majority, meaning 85% of lung cancers, by the time we make the diagnosis, they are in its advanced stages, stage 3 or stage 4. And that's where the biopsy is so important. In Singapore, the patient comes to see us with suspected lung cancer. The first thing we do is we do the PET scan, the blood test. Once that's done, confirm it's advanced stage disease, we get the biopsy done. Within 24 hours, we'll be able to tell you whether you carry any one of the when any one of the genes that allow us to treat you with oral treatment. If you have an EGFR mutation, an ELK mutation, a ROS1 mutation, then our preference is that you take oral treatment, oral targeted agents rather than chemotherapy. If your tumor shows does not show any of these three markers, then we will consider chemotherapy. If your PDL1 score is high, then you'll consider using immunotherapy. So every patient is treated differently. And by giving the correct treatment, the majority of these patients will enjoy good control of the disease and extensions of their lives. We love to see patients, for example, who have got ROS1 and L1 or, 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 or EGFR mutation because these patients are going to live for years and years, not weeks and months like in the past. Is there a simple way to explain immunotherapy? Very what, good. what is it? Okay. So, you must try to understand why do patients get cancer? In our old simplistic uh, understanding, we say, oh, you get cancer because your immune system is weak. All right? But that is not true. The reality of it is the cancer cells have developed a camouflage that hides themselves from your body's immune system. And we have now been able to identify the name of this, this camouflage. We now call it PDL1. In many lung cancer patients and other solid tumors, we have found this PDL1 receptor. And when we find it, we now have immunotherapy, which is anti PDL1. It removes the camouflage so that your body's immune system can recognize the cancer and will help us in the fight against the disease. So that's why immunotherapy has made a major difference in the treatment of many cancers. What are these immunotherapy? Immunotherapy is basically anti-PDL1 therapy. That's what people commonly refer to as immunotherapy. But in actual fact, immunotherapy is far broader than this. The use of monoclonal antibodies, that is also a form of immunotherapy. For example, in lymphoma, when we find the CD20, we will give them anti-CD20 treatment. And this is a form of a, immune, a, a monoclonal antibody that helps us in the fight against lymphoma. So every different cancer, you've got to understand the, the molecular genetics before you can decide what is the best form of treatment. For lung cancer, what are the common symptoms? Lung cancer is so common. The sad truth is by the time the patient gets symptoms, it is often very advanced. Mm -hmm. Any person who has a cough for an extended period of time, if you have a blood in your sputum, if you have shortness of breath, you've got bone pain or chest pain, any one of these can potentially be due to lung cancer. That's why it's very important to tell everyone. If you have any symptoms that persist for more than two weeks, please just go and see a doctor. 
And it is the doctor's responsibility, not your responsibility, to be able to assess, to see whether your symptoms are significant and needs further treatment, or whether it can be just treated symptomatically. If you find a mass in the lungs mm. through chest x-ray, how aggressive should they be in treating it? Very aggressive. By the time you see a shadow in the lung, you must try to understand why there is this shadow. Is this just an infection? Or is it something that's more, more serious, like a cancer? So anybody who has a shadow seen on a chest x-ray needs to be properly evaluated. Because most patients, they <coughs> delay and delay and it grows and it grows. You are absolutely right. And that's why it's so important to have something like this, to educate the public. Because they must understand that it is not, it is not just the doctor's responsibility, it is also your responsibility to make sure that you're on the right path. As a last question, Dr. Ang, you are a very prayerful, very experienced doctor. Some patients, they just rely on prayer and they don't. Prayer is very important. I often pray for my patients. I pray for myself. I pray for guidance. I pray for discernment. I pray for compassion. Without prayer, then indeed we are fighting this battle entirely on our own. Prayer is something whereby I encourage all patients. It is important that in a cancer battle, there are three elements. Number one is you. You are very important. You must look after yourself well. You must be, you must be strong in your battle. Number two, it depends on the advances in medicine and your doctor to be able to offer you the most appropriate treatment for the treatment of your cancer. And thirdly, at the end of the day, it is God Almighty who decides. It is His will that eventually will be done. Oh, it's very different if, as a doctor experiencing cancer, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, radiotherapy and everything, hearing those words, you know, it, it has a different impact. And so I'm not a blogger, I'm just a patient here. Any final words, Dr. Ang? My words to the people out there is, please, cancer is indeed a frightening disease, but do not let fear take over. It is important for you to find the courage, to find that hope in your fight against cancer. And we doctors are here to help you. Well, thank you very much. Thanks.